Okay, so hello to everybody. I know it's quite early in the morning. You had a bad night, and uh, I have a rule for my presentation. You can sleep all over my presentation, but please don't snore. It will be okay. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Martin Bartak, and I work for a Skoda power company located in Pilsen. Uh, maybe first of all, for my curiosity only, uh, have you guys ever heard of Skoda factory before? Skoda power, Skoda steam turbines, I can see rising hands, or Skoda cars, pretty good. But just Skoda cars, that's basically what we don't do. So forget it right now. <laughs> just steam turbines. Okay, let's go for the first information relating to Skoda power. Our company were, was established in 1859, which means that we have slightly over 150 years of experience in the field of steam turbines. We are European leading steam turbine manufacturer. We also provide our customers with uh, maintenance, repairs and overhauls, all that kind of services. And we also act like an EPC contractor, which means engineering, procurement and constructions. If I be more specific about that fact, so we don't produce just the steam turbine itself, but we also do all that maintenance stuff, repairs, and we can supply our customers with all the machine haul. It means the steam turbine, generator, all the civil works, stuff like that. In scope of our business, we are mainly focusing on different areas. The first is fossil fuels. We do our business for cogeneration, we do our business for uh, combined cycle, nuclear, fossil, solar, waste. And let's go through right now through another different facts relating to our company. So we are a steam turbine producer since 1904. We have our own design from 1911, which if I count it well, next year we are celebrating 100 years of uh, experience in the field of design uh, manufacturing steam turbines. Uh, we produce turbines from the range of 5 megawatts up to the big guys, 1,250 megawatts for nuclear power plants. Uh, All together, we have our installations in 63 countries or all over the world. Later on, I'll show you the graph with all these installations. And with the total output, 55,000 megawatts in 2.4 thousand units, which is quite amazing. Right now, Relating to heads, her headcount of ours, we have slightly over 1,000 people, which is almost nothing in comparison with uh, such giants like Delta Airlines. Presentation we can or we could listen here uh, yesterday. But uh, at the point of installing new system and implementing new methodologies and to make it live in the company, so it's quite a huge number, trust me. This is the picture, these are two pictures I like the most from my presentation something from history. The first one is the facing of the company in the 19th late or just early 19th century. The second picture, it's not me, uh, but it's the founder of the Skoda factory, Mr. Emil Skoda. Right now I would like to talk a little bit about our projects we have. We have mainly two categories of our project. The first one uh, is overall machine haul which is the turbine, which is the generator, which is all the components, piping, stuff like that, civil works. And basically we start our projects of that kind called PRO like a project after the contract signature. The finish is of course the PAC project acceptance certificate. And what's in the middle, you have to do guys some design work and specifications. Then you have to do some detailed design and documentation. You have to have commodities, generator, piping, civil. And one of the most important commodities at that point is the steam turbine itself, which is the stuff we are producing, we are manufacturing in our own factory located in Pilsen. Uh, relating to the length of those projects, so the steam or the machine hull project is ranging from 500 up to 700 uh, days, which is quite a long project. Uh, in that case, 
we are talking about so-called uh, single project environment because we are making or doing our installations in different sites, so we are not basically competing for the resources. When we compare it with the second context category of the project, which is called ZAP, uh, you can translate it like order, like production order, and it's basically about uh, production. If I go back to make it clear, so I was talking about commodity steam turbine. And now we are talking about steam turbine itself, like we do that internally in a Skoda Power. Again, we're starting out after contract signature. We finish our project with X work. And in the middle of the project are this uh, technical drawings and specifications, routings. You have to buy and manufacture steel components or key components like rotor, casings, heaters, condensers, and all that stuff to have everything for the, for the uh, turbine. Then you go to machining, and the last one is test assembly. Then you get X work and you get your project straight away to your customer. Now, why are the projects important to our company? So it's basically, everything we do, every machine hole project or every ZAP or order project, uh, we treat like a unique activity we do. And for every single project, we have a special project team with the project manager, chief engineer, guys from uh, production, from procurement, from quality, planners, cost accountants, so all the project teams. Just for your curiosity, uh, at one moment, we are running something like 160 projects at one time, so which is quite amazing, a huge number. Then right now, I would like to talk about why we decided to collaborate with the guys from the Goldrat CZ and with the guys from Realization. Uh, like four or five years ago, we did or we had uh, quite a huge discussion with our top management, new top management, and we tried to investigate a little bit bad points in our factory, in our production, and we identified some key metrics and key bad points the first bad point we had uh, was lateness of the project, okay? Our DDP was like 60%, pretty bad, okay? We didn't have enough information about uh, the status of the project. When the project manager came and wanted to see, how's my project? So he didn't really have enough information to evaluate the status. At the same time, we didn't have information relating to overall portfolio. We just exactly knew the separate problems on every single installation, every single turbine, every single project. But we didn't really see the whole picture. It's really bad and other bad things. And other bad things, the capacity planning. The capacity planning without the proper system was something like, uh, I think, based. Nothing good. Okay. Uh, big competition relating to resources. We have many projects with many project, with many project managers competing for resources. And basically, who won the resources? The manager who shouted the most, as usual. So we can compare the shouting and proper project management, and that's it. So all that was the bad points we had to defeat. So we started to collaborate with the guys from Goldrat CZ and with the guys from Realization to be focused on those bad points and just weak sides. And we identified several major goals of uh, overall implementation. The first goal, the most important one, was to increase our revenues by 20% and to increase the gross profit by 20%. In comp it was in period 2008-2011 in, compar in comparison with the previous financial plan. To achieve that big goal, we had to have, let, let's say, a range of sub-goals to supplement that big goal. The first one was to reduce lead times of the project by 20%. Then we wanted to have our DDP up to 95%. And we wanted to increase our productivity by another 20%. Okay? Because the bad point, another bad point we saw and just we identified at that, that time was that our capacity is 
not really well exploited. We felt that we could have much more, much more projects and do much more dollars, much more money from that. But with insufficient capacity or using of capacity, it wasn't really possible. So we had to do something with that. Okay. So we started the project of implementation in 2008, starting collaboration with the Goldrod guys. And, okay, let's scope a little bit. And uh, the first thing, when you, when you see the rough project plan we had to do, was the pipelining. It sounds maybe a little bit funny, but it is. It's like pipelining without pipeline. Okay, how to do that? So, first thing we had to do was like to take every our projects or everything relating to our projects and to settle that by the due dates and to freeze the last third of the project if we heading to the future, okay? To radically lower the VIP. Okay, the first thing we did was uh, VIP reduction by 40%, very dramatic. And we had results. Another phase, which was like in the same line, line, like the first phase, was to get all our projects into Concerto. So we had to create uh, MS project files for every project to get it into Concerto and to do all the necessary simulations to know the proper status in a pipeline and in Concerto stuff. Then we could really do the pipeline using Concerto. From the initial goals, let's go straight away right now before I tell you what we did, what exactly we did. Let's go to the goals we had and results. Uh, from the three major categories, like throughput, DDP, and lead times, uh, we have, we have uh, achievements in all three, but now because we are still running the project, we have to finish the measurements and metrics in a field of productivity. We have rough estimates, but I get to the point. So first goal, DDP. Initial goal is 95% from the contract with the gold rod. Now over the year, we have 90% of DDP, which is quite good, but it's not good enough. We want to be better. And hopefully we just achieve this 95% next, next year we want to. The second parameter is the project lead time, and we cut reduced the lead times of the project by 30%. That's good. And relating to the throughput, but just right, roughly estimate, we, we are, as I said, we are still working with the management on the specific metrics. But what we can see right now is a pipeline and number of casing in the pipeline, number of projects in the pipeline. And we can see that before the project started, we had 20 assemblies in the pipeline. Now, right now, we have 27 assemblies, which is increased by 30%. But we have capacity for 35 assemblies. So, which, which is pretty huge. So I would just recap that, again, we had uh, results in all those three activities, which is the vital step. Right, so let's go to another slide. Just for your imagination, let's go through some basic facts about DDP and last days over, especially the last one, last picture, is pretty exciting because from the initial lateness, like four and a half thousand days, so we came to like the 500, which is pretty good. Okay. What was the major point Concerto, or where Concerto helped us? Okay. Now if we have the system pipeline and Concerto system, so we can see, we can see uh, exactly the position of the project in the pipeline. We can see the current status. We can see the problems we have right now. The project manager have clear, managers have clear information about the overall status. The management has uh, the overview uh, about all the projects in the pipeline and portfolio, which is, get, which is great. Uh, we control the penalties, pretty much. Okay, so we have milestones for penalties in our project plans, and we are able to track it down, and we have just a very good maneuverability facing the our suppliers 
and we can press them because we just uh, get more money from the penalties. It's like an education of them. So now let's go, like I told you, so we go or we went from the initial plan, from the contract to the current status. Now we will talk about how, what we did, what exactly we did. So how the three rules were applied. First rule, pipelining. In the pipeline, we have so-called three synchronization points. We have assembly, rotor building, basic turbine calculations. And these constraints, these synchronization points, are based on physical capacity of the place. If you are talking about assembly, so at one time we can have four assemblies of turbines, two heaters at one moment, nothing more. In the case of rotor welding, we have just one automatic welder, one welding machine. And in turbine calculation, we have three people capable of doing that job at one moment. So this is another constraint. Another point which is necessary and vital for the pipelining is a new institute, new body in the Skoda Power, which is called PRM, like Portfolio Review Meeting. This body is consisted of top managers in Skoda, and these guys are responsible for evaluating the portfolio, evaluating the pipeline, and about enhancement in the field of project management. So this is the highest body for the pipelining. Below that, below the PRM, we have so-called capacity meeting, which is, a, again, it's a new body in the company, and this is consisted of the lower managers. Their major task is to identify the problems in the pipeline in advance and try to resolve the problems, okay? After problems resolutions, they go with these results to the PRM for approving. After approving, we fix the status in the pipeline. And we continue to process, we have it like on the weekly and monthly basis. Okay. Rule number two, buffering. Before the project started, so we didn't actually have uh, any MS project plans for the turbines, any plans for the, for the projects, just for a few. And uh, at the same time, the project plan was born, it died. Okay. Nobody, nobody has never continued working and updating with the plan, so which is bad. And now we created a standard template, MS project templates for every single project uh, with reduced lead times. It was really a painful process to get these uh, templates because we, have to, we, have to ha we had to have many meetings with the managers, general managers and low level managers and to uh, settle down and just to uh, make them understand it's necessary to, necessary to cut the lead times. Okay, so it was quite a painful process to cut it and reduce it and have this uh, final templates with the buffers and stuff like that, okay? Uh, what to say, just number three, three rule is a buffer management. It's a vital step, vital point. Uh, we introduced the new meetings throughout the company, management meetings like top management meetings and minimal, middle management meetings, and this every single meeting is focused on uh, one part of our portfolio. Top managers are mainly focused on all the portfolio and the key problems in the pipeline, key issues they have to resolve. Uh, the middle range managers, of course, they are focusing on just their field, like purchasing guys or purchasing problems and production guys and production, and so on and so on and so on. Right. What else is very important? We had to undertake uh, huge trainings all throughout the company relating to critical chain project management and stuff like updating and uh, uh, issue resolutions and all that stuff. Middle and top management has uh, special training for results and rules in Concerto. So just uh, we wanted to make clear that everybody from the management understand what is necessary to do uh, relating to problem resolution. Okay, so just a quick summarization of status before the implementation and after. The first is something about the project plans like I was discussing before. 
Before implementation, we didn't really have anything like a project plan. Okay? It was just based on a paper, paper copy, not updating, okay, just uh, stable. After, for every single project within the company, we have a project plan, which is updated in the Concerto software, uh, where the task managers have to react on the bad points, on the constraint, on the risks, to update it. Uh, purchasing plans, before the project started, we have to just the purchase orders in the system, due dates, single stuff, okay, nothing like a schedule. Now the purchasing part is a very vital part of our MS project files, and just everybody from the company, especially management, can see what is happening currently in the purchasing. Okay? Project status. It was basically one of the major key, key aspects why we introduced uh, the project in the company, because we didn't know uh, the progress of the projects. Now we have great information about uh, how is the project status, what is currently happening, and what, is, uh, what will it be in the future about the project. Okay. Machining shop for small parts, okay. no system of priorities before that. Now we, we, have, we have priorities according to Concerto. Uh, service, maintenance, repair, overhauls. It was just most, ter most terrific part because like DDP in that field was something like 30, 40 percent. Terrifying. Now we have like DDP like this 80, 90 percent again. Okay, and everything priority is, is, is visible in Concerto. Synchronization, okay, full kit process. We had nothing before that with Concerto. Now we had a full kit process. I would just maybe go to another important Thing for you, just accept the IT system, yes. These obstacles was interesting for you and for your implementation. So obstacles we had to face and uh, how we overcame these problems. The first one, most important, surprisingly, was of lack of continuous and transparent support of Skoda managers within the throughout the implementation. Because at the beginning of the implementation, so Skoda managers said, okay, that we wanted the project, we want to implement it, we want everything have, okay, everything will be pink and without problem. But later on, when the problems appeared and we wanted quick resolution, it was pretty tough and pretty hard to get the guys together and make them do some resolution, okay, some quick resolution. So what to do at the time? So we have something like small subcommittee, which were my guys, guys from Goldrat, and we very closely collaborated with every single top manager and still explained necessity of the, and what is necessary to do, why we want to do that, that it is in, in very important to do, and so on, so on, so on, so many discussions, and we overcame these problems. The second important vital step was uh, absence of buy-in from the middle management guys. Okay, so sometimes we heard, okay, okay, we, we're gonna do that, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and finally, when we looked into Concerto, no updating. What happened? Okay, so again, many discussions with the top managers, many persuading, kind of punishment, and I mean, just we improved the buy-in. Number three, okay. So low level of information. At the beginning of the project, so we established a core project team, so just very important guys uh, throughout the company, from purchasing, engineering, construction, uh, production, quality department, uh, sales guys, stuff like that. But just later on, when we wanted to see uh, if all the information are transmitted to the company, so we realized that you know, this is not a state. This is just not happening. Again, so very strong, uh, strong task for the subcommittee, again, with uh, dealing with top managers, middle managers, and just to you know, press the information throughout the company. That was the vital step. And number four, pretty tough too, low level formal authority of CCPM project team. Okay? The bad point was when we identified the problems, we were focusing on the problems, okay? we highlighted where the problem is, the field of task managers, updating, stuff like that, okay? to get the results from these guys. It was sometimes impossible. And again, 
the same way, the same road to the top management and middle management and persuade and persuade and persuade and then afterwards we get the results. So these are the main obstacles they had to be overcome. Okay? From these obstacles, again the same thing, we identify the critical success factors. So I don't know if you guys all are just implemented or have already implemented the system, but uh, when you are starting thinking about it, be careful about those four things you really be focused on to get results. So continuous transparent support of management during all the implementation process. You have to have or to and to provide the necessary buy-in and support of middle managers. Okay, information flow still running, and you should have just a higher formal authority of the implementation project team. Okay, this is the key aspect. The last one is use concerto management reports as the official source. It's quite clear, but it's it's uh, important to say it like in here this place. Okay. So it was just basically the major, major fields I wanted to highlight right now. So why we implemented a project, what were the results, what obstacles we had to overcome, and what was all the way from the beginning to, let's say, the four, to, to today's status. I said today's status because we had some, still we have something like a year ahead to finish the project, okay? We need to have our system uh, sustainable and live in. And that's a pretty hard work. Okay, so what's next? Focus on the sales support, so testing different project portfolios, delivery scenarios, dates, and so on, and more collaborating with our suppliers to be able, for example, working in Concerto and updating strictly uh, their task in our Concerto and to have all the picture. Okay, so these are the main activities of our SCODA implementation.